think when we started at CCS, it, it was a, a time where parents were very involved in, in every aspect of the school, from the board to the teachers to coaches and all of that. Um, over the you know the last 15 plus years, you know CCS has grown, um, and although we've stayed true to the mission that we've had and that. Uh, Don and other leaders helped really build a strong foundation. It seems that we have become more intentional on sharing that vision, that mission with a broader community, to a more diverse group. Um, and that's been exciting. It's, it's, um, it's brought challenges, you know, as we've kind of transitioned from more of a, a parent-run family kind of focused school to a, a broader community school, but I, I think the benefits are great and, and we get to see uh, God's kingdom expanding in our own community around us and, and throughout our city. I say all the time in parent interviews that uh, CCS started because a group of people um, really wanted distinctively Christian education for their children. It wasn't that they were running from something. They were saying, we want to start a school that distinctively says the fact that I'm made in God's image and I'm redeemed in Christ has something very specific to do with the steps that we take and the way that we live uh, and the way we care for God's creation and how we represent Christ and seek his kingdom in all areas of the home, church, society, and culture those people that really started CCS in a community that already had a rich private school tradition. That was really, really hard, groundbreaking work um, to really set the anchor well and allow that to seed itself. Uh, and, then, and then those growth years as we moved down off Lookout Mountain and, and kind of exploded, that, that's a whole different style of leadership is you go from a really small number of students to a larger number of students. And, and my role coming in kind of after that, we've grown some, but not at the same rates as they did in those growth years, was, was really to take that anchor uh, and seed it more deeply. How do we grow the depth of what we're trying to accomplish as opposed to kind of growing the width? So that's a very different kind of leadership exercise and a very different focus. Each child is a treasure and is valuable. And, and no matter where they fit on the spectrum of giftedness or where their family is relative to socioeconomics or whatever their, their race or ethnicity is, how do we, how do we find a way uh, to focus intently on that individual student and their growth while also having them understand that they were designed to be part of a community? Uh, so that really shaped the growth and development of academic programs and co-curricular programs and the support services that we put around teachers in regular typical classrooms to serve a really uh, wide and diverse population of students. One thing in particular that I have really noticed and appreciated so much is the increased awareness and support for students that have um, differences, learning differences, and needs beyond your typically developing child. Seeing that department and that um, just focus of the school continue to grow so that it is reaching into every single classroom and opening doors for families who in the past wanted to send all of their children here, but they couldn't because we didn't have what we needed to serve them well. Now we do. You know, we have the staff, we have the training, we have the resources to be able to love and serve children that have so many different needs and it's beautiful. We're still growing and learning and how to do it best but we have made huge strides in the last six years. It's actually why CCS is special is a lot of Christian schools, they're made, they're here for parents, for Christian parents, for a safe environment, for an environment that is gonna push each child to reach their fullest potential. And I would say that in recent years, what has struck me as do we reach all students? I think that's one of the, changes. We have 
tremendously improved over the last 10, 12 years. I think administration has said, we're going to take them. We're going to figure it out and we're going to do it well. And so it's reaching all students at all levels. And that really has bettered us. But if we don't couple those words of God's beautiful faithfulness to, to very different people as part of his covenant with actions, then we do a disservice and we really aren't holistically educating our children uh, in the grace of God that Ephesians 4 says also gave us unique and distinctive gifts. So about six years ago, um, now the board and administration embarked on a really complicated journey of saying, practically speaking, if we're really going to be committed to diversity and inclusion, what, what, what do we have to do to make that happen? And that led us to have some conversations about what that meant for things like student-faculty ratios. How do we ensure, if we had a wide range of students in a classroom based on ability, how do we ensure that every one of them is getting an excellent education, right? And that led us to reduce kind of classroom size and add paraprofessionals in the lower school. That's at the point where we really said that co-curriculars are mission critical. And co-curriculars include student life. How do you create the avenues for students to build relationships peer to peer? How do we surround students with a breadth of co-curricular activities that allows every student to find a home at CCS? So that, that student who wants to play football, right, enjoys a really positive experience with great Christian coaches who are also great football coaches. And that student who wants to participate in musical theater has an opportunity if they want to go on professionally to be involved in musical theater, they'll have the opportunity to do that. And for the student that likes to put things together and tear them down and put them back together again even better, that they'll have an industrial arts program and a robotics program for those things to happen. All that stuff, right, does attract students and does allow us to grow in enrollment, but more importantly, it ties back to that initial mission focus, which is students who are made in God's image, who are uniquely gifted, that, that God made us different on purpose. And we don't wanna be a school that's reflective of a narrow population of God's creation, because we don't think that our messaging but the value of each child would be consistent with the application of that in our school community. For many on the robotics team, the team has become their community. It's their group of friends. They don't all necessarily have the same talents, but they have different talents that are very compatible. And they end up being brought together by a common purpose, by a common love, a common task, challenge. It's really a beautiful, microcosm of the greater CCS community. You think middle and high school, most schools have co-curricular activities, but here at CCS, we pour into the lower school students too, and that's rare. So um, like my daughter, she's participated in the after school dance club, and she loves it, loves it. She participated in the art club after school. My son, he has done the Lego club. I mean, and they love it, and it, lets them use skills and talents and just to try new things to see if it's something they want to pursue. And I still remember sitting in a classroom with some of the moms who wanted to um, do some things once the high school football program, because it started in middle school and then built as the kids went up. And I just remember sitting in the classroom, listening to Chad speak to the opportunities for us to do that. And, you know, of course we started the Spirit Shop, which now is like a real shop, but back then it was humble beginnings. But just the way we could use those opportunities for good and to promote the school, to build community from, from elementary all the way through high school and incorporate all three schools into making that more of a campus-wide event. And it was such a positive thing. And then to look now and see how it's been built, to see all of the opportunities and the expanded facilities that these students now are enjoying, um, it's, it's been neat to watch. We want to build grow places rather than show places. Facilities are really a conduit through which the relationship that's primary to education, which is teacher to student and, and student to student as peers, that, that ultimately that's, right, that's facilitated by 
buildings and facilities that allow activities to happen. No one would argue that to do lab science as well, you need to have great laboratories. And if we're gonna put on athletic programs, then we need to allow the facilities to, to make those things happen. And, and sometimes synthetic turf is the best way to make outdoor activities happen because it can handle uh, the changes of seasons and the, the demand of activities that we have uh, in those spaces. So we took a serious look at mission and then said, what are, what are the facilities that we're missing to allow our mission to be executed? So if we're gonna add robotics, we have to have not just the tools, but we have to have the rooms to be able to do robotics so we can use the best of our abilities to glorify God in those specific areas. That's, that's part of flourishing within those activities. The facility additions that we've made have been through the generosity of our donors. Uh, we didn't take on long-term debt to build those facilities. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of slow changes, which I, I love. It's not just been like, bam, everything's changed. It's just been slow. It's a slow growth, which is what I love, just to see like the progress. I definitely think that the changes with facility, it, it was very, it was made aware that this was for us and that they wanted us to have a space that we could really use in a, a, an easy learning environment as well. Um, and I even just love what they've done with the science wing too. It's given us, I think even for students who want to go into the um, science field, kind of more of a realistic view of what that will look like, even with just a change of um, scenery. So it's been really sweet just to grow with CCS. The older we've gotten, the the older almost the building has gotten, but there's also been some new to it, which has been really sweet. There's so many things <laughs> that make me excited for the future of CCS. I mean, the exponential growth that we've had over the last six years has been phenomenal. Just from our campus expanding to accepting more diverse students to, you know, the extra curricular activities that have been added for all the different ages. I mean, there's just so many things to look forward to, but I would say for me as faculty and staff is being able to see the students that I've worked with continue to grow and see how just they flourish in the future here and then on. You know, um, I'm excited to see my own children go through this school pre-K through 12. I would say the roots um, of CCS that went back to the early years and the growth years that were really anchored in a distinctively Christian education that, that wanted to be incarnational. That CCS itself uh, meant to be something that contributed positively uh, to the community of Chattanooga, but wherever our students, wherever our graduates went after that. So it, it wasn't just doing lip service to, we want to be distinctively Christian. It was actually asking the questions and shaping program as to what what should our graduates look like and what should they be doing when they're in their 30s after they've graduated from CCS. I started in kindergarten and I just graduated this last year. I am moving to New York City. I will be going to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy and I'm going to be getting a BFA in musical theater with the hopes of hopefully being a theater teacher or a freelance director. So that's my next journey. As a CCS student, I found that teachers constantly pushed us to make sure that our focus in our center was glorifying God. I never felt that um, I needed to bring myself glory, but it was constantly making sure that the glory was given back to Christ. And um, I just remember even in Mrs. Love's class, she would teach and her awe and her wonder was always back to our Creator. And then even with Mr. Campbell, I just remember him asking difficult questions that would actually challenge our faith. And um, with theater, I um, really enjoyed my time because I just constantly learned what it meant to humble yourself and to step into a story and tell a story that was ultimately about God. And I just pray that um, yeah, students would just learn from one another because I can say that my relationship with God has grown because I have learned from other students um, and the teachers that were intentional with me. So I pray that that in intentionality will continue and that that challenge will continue as well. We have been involved, you know, as donors and as, as just participants in different ways for almost 20 years. That foundation that was built by the 
the founding fathers and families uh, of CCS, it, it remains. It's very strong and it has allowed us to, to build on that. And I, I think CCS needs to continue to take risks and trust God that his kingdom is expanding and, and that we have a role to play in that. Um, and so I'm excited about the opportunities that are before us as a, as a school. It is very different today than it was 50 years ago. It's very different today than it was 10 years ago. But as a school, our job is to adapt and adjust uh, to meet the needs of the constituents, the families that we serve, while at the same time staying anchored in the truth, right, the timeless truths of Scripture that shape where we are. There's a lot of things we can say about what's happened with CCS over the last 50 years. I think the thing that's, that's most dear to my heart is, is for all of us that are experiencing CCS today, and the majority of, of the people that are gonna see this video have been blessed by the growth years and this season of CCS life. So my last 12 years. So if we look back and we're in that population of people and we see all of God's faithfulness manifested in things that have happened at CCS and we celebrate those things without going all the way back to year one and the incredible sacrifices that those founding families made to allow CCS to happen it was financial sacrifice, it was social sacrifice, uh, and in some ways it was educational risk because they were pulling their children from schools that existed and putting them into something that was a beautiful dream and a beautiful vision but didn't have a history to go along with it. So if nothing else comes from a celebration of 50 years, if all that comes from that is us remembering the sacrifices that were made by those people so that we could enjoy a wonderful, distinctively Christian, covenantal Christian school in a Reformed tradition, then that would be plenty. So to all of you that put your heart and soul and finances and time into CCS to get this started, I just want you to hear me say thank you.